In order to discuss uh, accelerated reference frames uh, in which the acceleration results from a rotation, it's very useful to be able to cast rotations in terms of angular velocity vectors. And so let's look at how that works in this section. To think about angular velocity vectors, let's first think about a merry-go-round. So imagine you have a merry-go-round uh, and it's rotating in this direction. So imagine it's rotating uh, counterclockwise as seen from above with a rate omega equal to d theta by dt. So that's, that's the angular rate at which it's rotating. We can specify this rotation by drawing a vector which points uh, along the axis of rotation. So of course for a, a merry-go-round the axis of rotation runs right through the middle of the merry-go-round. The length of this vector corresponds to the angular uh, velocity and the direction uh, of the angular velocity vector is specified by using the right-hand rule. So if we want to consider uh, counterclockwise rotation into this direction, we need to point our velocity vector in a direction that our right hand would wrap around in the direction of the rotation, and so our thumb would then point along the direction of the, velocity, of the angular velocity vector. So we wrap our right hand, hand in the direction uh, of the angular uh, velocity, and then our thumb will point in the direction of the angular velocity vector. And so that specifies an angular velocity vector. We can use our angular velocity vector to calculate the linear velocity that results from the angular velocity vector. And the way to see that is to imagine uh, the Earth rotating. Uh, of course, the angular uh, velocity vector for the Earth points through the North Pole by definition. Now, a certain point on the surface of the Earth, say down here in North America somewhere, that's at an angle theta from the North Pole. So that's our, that's our, uh, what's called our co-latitude. It's 90 minus the, the latitude of that point. Someone sitting at the surface of the Earth at that point is a certain uh, radial distance away from the angular velocity vector. So that person is sitting at a distance r where r is the radius of the Earth, times the sine of angle theta. So that's the distance they are from, from the rotation vector for the Earth. Now because the Earth is rotating about the North Pole, this person is moving with a velocity into this direction. And the linear velocity with which they are moving in that direction depends on how far away from the rotation vector they are. So if, for example, theta were equal to zero, that is a person sitting at the North Pole, they will experience no velocity around the, the angular velocity vector. They will experience no linear velocity because they're standing right on top of the North Pole. And as you go farther and farther away from the North Pole, as theta gets bigger and bigger until you get down to the equator, the linear velocity that results from this angular velocity vector, that linear velocity increases. And so we expect that the velocity that results from this rotation is something like the angular velocity vector times r, the radial distance from the center of the Earth through which the velocity vector runs, times the sine of the angle between these two uh, vectors, the radial vector and the angular velocity vector. And so this looks a lot like a cross product, and so we won't prove it here, but it turns out that you can write the linear velocity, the velocity vector, that results from an angular rotation. That linear velocity vector is going to be the angular velocity vector crossed into the radius vector where r here specifies the distance from the center 
uh, of rotation. So not not just the distance uh, from the rotation axis, but actually the distance from the center for our rotation vector. And so again, to be clear, we have an angular velocity vector which emanates from a point in order to determine the direction of rotation that corresponds to this angular velocity vector we wrap our fingers around into the direction of rotation and then our thumb points in the direction of the angular velocity vector in order to calculate the velocity that results from this angular velocity vector we take the angular velocity vector and cross it into uh, the radial vector from the point at which the angular velocity vector emanates. So in this case, uh, omega cross r, remember to do the right hand rule, you point your index finger in the direction of the velocity vector, you point your, the angular velocity vector, excuse me, you point your middle finger in the direction of the r vector, and then your thumb will point in the direction of the linear velocity vector. In this case, the linear velocity vector points in this direction. And you can see how that would result, how that velocity would result from rotation using this angular velocity vector. This cross product rule is really useful, in particular, if we want to rotate our coordinate system, which in this case I'm specifying using the E1, E2, and E3 hat basis vectors, if we want to specify how that coordinate system changes as the result of a rotation, this cross product makes it particularly easy. So let's imagine, for example, we have a, an angular velocity vector which points along E3. So it points parallel to E3. So in that case, we expect that rotations about the E3 direction, that's not going to change the E3 vector. That, that E3 vector is just going to keep pointing uh, in the same direction. But of course, E1 and E2 are going to rotate. And so the way to calculate the, the change in our basis vectors as a function of time, the time derivative of these two basis vectors, that's going to be the angular velocity vector crossed into that basis vector. And as we'll see in the next sections, this is a tremendously useful result. It, it allows us to calculate uh, the accelerations, the fictitious accelerations that we see in non-inertial frames when we have rotation, which, is the, uh, which drives the acceleration. And then finally, we can add angular velocity vectors just like any vectors. If we imagine we have omega 1 vector representing one angular velocity vector and omega 2, we can add those two things together to get a net angular velocity vector. So rotating, about, uh, rotating with omega 1 and then rotating with omega 2 at the same time, that results in rotation about this new angular velocity vector omega. And then, if we want to ask uh, what is what is the uh, velocity at point R that results from this combined velocity vector, we can calculate it by just using this addition rule here. So it's the velocities, the linear velocities, that each individually results from each of those uh, individual angular velocity vectors. And so as we'll see, this is a tremendously useful way to approach rotations. We can use these, uh, this uh, angular velocity vector to describe arbitrary rotations and deal with dynamics in a rotating reference frame.